Good morning, guys and gals. So let me show you where we ended up. It's kind of getting dark last night. You can see the cliffs of Dover across there. We're only about, oh, maybe seven miles from Alton, which is another mile marker. It's a place we're going to stop for a couple, three days. I might even, depending on how much it is, we might stay in the at the guest dock at the marina. If it's cheap, like it was five years ago, and we're on an island right now, I'll show you on the map. And we parked here, I just kind of nosed up to the, the sandy beach there between spots tied up to a tree. It's actually a great spot, except a couple times some barges went by and they made some some waves. Here, I'll turn the phone around. These barges went by and made some waves and it, you know, the boat, since it's kind of half on the sand, you know, it was clunk, clunk. Clunk, you know, so it's whatever. <laughs> it's okay. You just get a little clunky ride for five minutes or so. But yeah, guys, we're just kind of letting the sun come up and another, it looks like another decent day. It was a really nice day to travel yesterday. So, and uh, we found some junk on this island. Looks like maybe someone had a little camp over here once and, and uh, we even found a sail, like a sail from a sailboat, you know, which that canvas can be, you know, usable. People make stuff out of it. I know if, I had some way to carry it, I'd give it to Wayne, Wayne's Diaries, and he is planning on getting like an industrial sewing machine and starting to make like sail bags and stuff like that, so it's one of his things for his mobile homestead. You should check out his channel if you don't know about it. He's a he's a friend of mine, and he's a friend of the channel, and in some ways he's the reason why I got into shanty boats, you know, all these years ago. He did an epic trip, but a lot of folks here already know that, but if you don't, I'll link his channel below, so. Okay, guys. Uh, let's just get going. I don't know. It's time. I don't. No. No reason to hang on. Hang out on this island. Let's go. Let's go to Alton, and then I can shave this god awful beard, do some laundry. We're almost out of food. We're out of beer. <laughs> so we better get going. <laughs> Stay tuned. Oh hi, my name's Wavy Gravy, star of the channel. I'm kind of a big deal. I don't know why, but Brenton keeps putting the barge up too close to the shore, and then when barges go by, it kicks it up a little further, and then he has to hurt his back and push it off, and he's sometimes he yells, and he's just mad at himself. So I'm kind of looking for a new boat to get on. So if you have good treats and a really good, uh, comfortable place for me to nap, I'd appreciate you adopting me. Thanks. Now that we're below the mouth of the Illinois, I'm wondering if we're going to start seeing more potential loopers, like I would guess this boat is. At least going to Florida. At least going south, obviously. And they're flanking us to port. Passing us up. Everybody's going faster than the Beagle Barge. They just waved at us. <laughs> there they are up there in the flybridge. Looks like a nice, comfortable boat. Okay, we are coming into the town of Alton. We are just about to pull into the marina in Alton here. It's kind of neat how the entrance goes under the bridge here. That's right about on the dock where we were at last time. Well, kind of a bummer, guys, here in Alton at the marina. And five years ago, they just charged me 10 bucks a night to tie up to the dock here. The guest dock, I guess you'd call it, transit dock, with uh, no hookups. And now it's going to be $28 a night. And the showers are turned off, and there's no laundry facilities. <laughs> so for those that say that things are getting better, like when I do my little you know, pontifications in paradise over on the other channel. I just, I, I don't know. I, they don't seem like they're getting better. <laughs> but, you know, some people have real problems. I got to keep saying that. And uh, it's no big deal. I'll pay for one night because I really want to go to town. I got to, you know, go get food and go do some laundry and I'll have to find a laundromat and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm going to unload the scooter today. So, just going to feel rushed. I was hoping to stay here for couple three days but not at 28 bucks a night so I know that's no big deal for most people and most boaters and most loopers but 
it is for me and how I'm doing it. So, okay guys, well, I better get cracking. <laughs> I can't, I can't linger at Alton this time. So <laughs> stay tuned. I don't know if you can see this guys, but Wavy's walking herself. She loves taking the leash in her mouth. <laughs> this is her way of saying, I do not want to go on the boat. Get me off the boat. Good morning, guys and gals. This is the Beagle Barge Beagle Adventure. Leaving Alton, Illinois. And this marina. And I hope it's the last time we ever are here. I met a couple of really nice people here in Alton, but the folks are at this marina, I'll tell you. Even though we had to pay $30 a night for it, I am, I, I, I'm glad we got off the water for a couple days. Um, you don't have to stay at a marina to get off the water, but um, you know, it, it's fun and peaceful and exciting. It can all be, you know, to be going down the river on a river trip. Uh, getting off the boat once in a while is important. I mean, it really just, it, it applies to everything. You could be on a motorcycle adventure and getting off out of the saddle for a couple days it just feels wonderful. And then when you get back on, or back on the trip, on the adventure, it just, it's like a rejuvenation. You just kind of get excited all over again, like I find myself right now. <laughs> the coffee's kicking in, but I'm getting excited again to get back on the river and get some miles and new horizons, so. So yeah, just keep that in mind when you do your trip. <laughs> I understand this is a different type of walk that instead of having swinging doors like we've seen for the entire trip so far, it has like walls that come up and down. Like, <laughs> like my hand there. We'll find out. All right, guys, so I just radioed the lockmaster and asked him whether we're gonna have lines or we're gonna float. He said, just go ahead and float and he'll take it slow. So, awesome, sounds good to me. We're gonna float it through. Coming up on lock 26. That's the chamber with the green light. Kind of more Star Wars imagery here. It's like we're going down the, the shaft in the original Star Wars to shoot the missiles into the wombat hole and blow up the Death Star. <laughs> Can you see it? <laughs> uh, I grew up on Star Wars, the original one, guys, so it's like forever going to be etched into my mind. Like it should be. Someone else having fun. Did anyone tell him you can't have fun on the job? As soon as you're getting paid, you're supposed to never have any fun. Trust your feelings, Luke. Turn off your ship's computer. That target's smaller than the wombats I used to blast at home. <laughs> wow, look at this. Can you believe it? It's awesome. What a feat of engineering. Once again, they're just doing it for little old us. Wavy's back there snoring away under the covers. Amazing. Amazing. How lucky are we? Oh, you decided to get up and check things out? Oh, princess. No, 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 no. I don't want you going out on the front deck. You can go right there. After the folks in the comment section started pointing out that there's no side doors on the front deck and Wavy's leaning off like she always does. Sometimes she just gets right up on the edge like all it would take is just some kind of evasive maneuver and she probably could go off. And when we get in these chambers especially, I just have these visions of like her getting sucked down through the, the pipes and the pumps. <laughs> That'd be horrible. That's a good spot for you. Alrighty. Okay, this is what they're talking about here. Look at this. This wall comes up. I wonder why they did this one different. What would be the reason for that? I'll look into it a little bit. If I can figure it out, I will, I will put it below. I don't know if you guys can hear this very well. I think that's from a passing train and it it's transferring the sound into the into the chamber here. It's like whining and moaning.
I was wrong about the train making that noise. It's these pins going down right here. Make that noise. There's that back wall fully deployed there. <laughs> Guys, I know I'm not doing this justice. You just gotta kinda be here, but it just feels like we're in a movie. Like it's opening the gates to Jurassic Park or like, you know, the Temple of Doom or something. It's just all the noise. This straining old machinery and, you know, you're half expecting like thousands of orcs to funnel through that gap right there and start coming at you with swords. <laughs> I'll shut up. You can just take it in. to return to the wheel here guys so the scooter's got to be in the shot fortunately but you get the gist of it we're on the other side here this is the biggie this is one of those bigger locks I'm trying to drive and always We just teach you to hold the camera so you can see we're just just south of lock 26 here and right up here is where the, that shipping canal that goes past the chain of rocks starts very important to not miss that and this area is just very industrial there's a lot of barges and push boats lining up both sides of the, the river Really nothing too exciting to see. I'll just show you guys. Got a lot of uh, even barges up on the hard. Probably you'll never see the water again. Okay, another milestone I think is being crossed right now. We are passing the mouth of the Missouri River. The Missouri River is another one of those trips, those adventures I wanna take, and it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen sooner than later. I want to launch as far up as anybody can without portaging. You know, the Missouri River actually goes way up into almost Canada. I mean, Western North Dakota for sure. Because I've been there, so Lake Sacagawea, I think is how you pronounce it. Uh, but you couldn't, I couldn't put the barge up that high because there's obstacles in the way, right? There's no locking dams, or there's just dams, I suppose, right? Uh, and I have to do more research on this, but I think it's Sioux City, South Dakota. You can put in, and then you, it's open river all the way down. I'm going to make that trip. I, I probably won't do it in the barge. I've got other, I've got some other, you know, kind of plans for that, and you know, we'll just. I'll just, well, we got stuff to look forward to. <laughs> I hope we're still doing it. <laughs> hope I'm still making videos and I hope you're still watching them. That's even more important. But anyways, this is the mouth of the Missouri River. We are just about to cross, uh, pass in front of. And we're also almost exactly at the same time we're getting into the shipping channel, which goes uh, through uh, St. Louis. And it gets around, from what I understand, I will try to find some information on this too because I want to know. I should know more about this, but... Uh, it's called the Chain of Rocks, and I think it's an area on the Mississippi River, a very rare one, that they just decided it was better to bypass than than to try to dredge or something, you know? Like, it's, it's a spot that... It was a unique spot in the river when it came to making it a shipping river from north to south, so... But I'll find out more, and I will put it below. I'll find, like, the perfect kind of link that someone could follow and go read up on it if you're interested, so... This is going to look like any other piece of the river, I'm sure, <laughs> but I am going to point it out to you. Right, right there is the mouth of the Missouri. It's actually not very big. It's just kind of a, I don't, I mean, I, I imagine you have to be able to pass over, over it, right, to get in the Mississippi here. The barges would have to, um, and it looks like we could, but it doesn't look very big. That's it right there, the mouth of the Missouri, where it hits the Mississippi. 
This gives us a little better view of the mouth of the Missouri right there. It's actually a little bit bigger than I was thinking before we got a little bit south of it here. So, so yeah, mouth of Missouri right there. Okay, guys, we're going to go brave the rain for a second because I really want to show you this. Off to your right is the chain of rocks. You do not want to go that way. Peril. Peril is that way. To the right is Peril. And then off to the left is the shipping channel. And there's this very modest sign right there that says, Lock. <laughs> So you better, you know, already know in advance that you want to take a left here because you would think they would just have these big blinking lights or something just saying, do not go this way. But I wonder how many people have. <laughs> but we're going to the left. A lot of people call the Tin Tom Waterway the ditch because there is you know, some of it, not as much as you would think, but some of it is kind of like a ditch, <laughs> going out a ditch. <laughs> but I'll tell you, this, what do you call the shipping canal going around St. Louis here? This is a ditch. <laughs> There's just no, nothing else you can call it. This is my temporary solution to cold air coming through the door here. I'm going to skin this with something. I'll just surprise you guys. I got the idea. And I'm st standing. It helps to stand. I have the thickest socks I've got and there are holes in them too. And I'm standing on top of my blanket because of all the cold coming through the floor. <laughs> <coughs> so, yeah, this boat can use some more insulation, especially under the floor and up in the ceiling. We just have to survive the loop first, and then we will improve this boat even more. Okay, guys, they uh, called us through, asked us to put the life jackets on. First time that any lock has asked us to do it or required it. I think that's for us now. This is who we were waiting for. The crane barge. Here's something I don't think we've seen yet. So here's the here's a barge coming in from the south and this is how they how they feed into the chamber there I mean it's you know pretty straightforward I don't think it's anything surprising but it's just like you know they're threading a big needle there we have plenty of room when we go through but these guys really have to well they just know what they're doing the skill involved is amazing but these guys are in high demand you know how to drive one of these. Okay guys, I think how we're gonna do this, passing slowly through St. Louis, is I'm just gonna turn the camera around. I'm gonna show you guys like the bridges we go under and of course the arch, which I can already see. Um, I'll, I'll show you from a distance and then when we get closer to it we kind of just pass by it. The arch is actually not on the river. It's kind of a little off of it and it, it's iconic. It's one of those American icons like the Statue of Liberty and the Empire State Building and stuff like that and that's that's great. I've actually been up in it one time <laughs> a long long time ago but uh, yeah okay so just this is St. Louis and it's a piece of cake. A, a lot of uh, boaters, shanty boaters, they get nervous about it. I remember back when I was doing the Shanty Boat Beagle Adventure, I was nervous about it because I just heard so much hype about how hard it is to go through St. Louis. I remember, you know, a lot of driftwood and logs in the water. <clears throat> I, I remember a lot of more barge traffic because this is a very busy area. And of course they make wakes and such, but at the end of the day, it's no big deal. You just got to pay a little more attention and do a little more steering and navigation and you'll be just fine. So I'll turn the phone around, stop yapping. St. Louis, Missouri.
you know I'm not a fan of big cities <laughs> as you guys I'm sure already know but if you're gonna take one in and you're gonna see it this is such a good way to see it doing six miles an hour right through the heart of it on a river just taking it in you just can't go wrong doing it this way it's just like the lyric I never saw the good side of a city until I pitched a ride on the river boat queen yeah. so much wisdom he knew what he was talking about so the Don Quixote in me is tilting at windmills, or in this case, already sacked castles. That castle's already been sacked. So we'll continue on and find our riches in another castle that hasn't been sacked before us. What is the difference between that and a castle? Just an old castle in England or Ireland or Scotland. What's the difference? I'm spotting more homeless camps. There's some tents right there. Yeah, there's quite a few actually now that I'm looking ahead. You know, like a lot of these iconic American must-see spots like Mount Rushmore and like I said before, like, uh, well, like the Statue of Liberty, which I've never seen. Hopefully we will see. I gotta steer the boat, guys, if it's getting a little shaky. I'm reaching down and steering the boat. You know, and it's like, but, you know, I'm, I'm trying to put that all aside that like, you know, this, this is so iconic. It's like, it really is, a, it's another feat of engineering and a feat of architecture. I mean, look at it. That's amazing. You know, who built that? I, I wanna, I'm want i gonna find out. It's all this stuff we kind of just take for granted again. You know, we just think, oh yeah, the, the arch. You know, I heard about it, I don't even know when, five years old or something. I'm gonna look into it a little bit. I might try to tactfully just put a little information about it, you know, somewhere in this video. Because I bet a lot of people, other than, you know, people might live in Missouri or people live in St. Louis here proper, we probably just don't know much about it other than it exists and it's kind of an iconic um, piece of architecture in America. some kind of tour some kind of riverboat tour I don't know if they still move or not it might just be stuck on shore for tourists to visit I don't know place is looks abandoned to me busted out windows I wonder I wonder what it was if any you know I know there are folks who watch 
videos here and they are good at research or they're just you know they're from around here and there always seems to be an answer you know to questions like this if you happen to know what this plant was it's on the oh it's on, it's on the illinois side if we still are bridging uh missouri and illinois i think we are in fact i'm almost certain we are um it's probably like central st louis here maybe south st louis south of 70 or 64 you have any idea what this used to be that would you know put it in the in the comments below I'd, i'll try to look it up also if i remember getting these crappy Walmart treats instead of my little Caesars treats from the Dollar General. I'm just going to sit here and begrudgingly eat them.